Hi, my name is Rich McHugh. I'm going to talk a little bit about HyFlex instruction in Makerspaces and how it can be an effective tool. But first, just let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I manage the Makerspace or Digital Scholarship Commons in the library at the University of Victoria. I'm also a sessional instructor in the Faculty of Education where I teach ed tech courses and a multimedia and online learning course. And in our Makerspace, we teach a lot of introductory workshops. And probably 80% of those workshops are taught at the invitation of professors in their four credit classes, almost always in support of an upcoming class assignment. Here's just a quick outline of what I'm going to discuss over the next few minutes. But before I get into that, I just wanted to tell you about a recent HyFlex workshop I taught where we had learners participating from around the world, including face-to-face -face in our library makerspace in Victoria, BC, from across Canada, from the United States, and in particular Chicago and San Jose, California, as well as from Lagos, Nigeria, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. Now this was pretty unusual, but it was amazing that we had people participating in the workshop literally from around the world. And global participation like this is a beneficial side effect of all the work done to make workshops accessible to learners from their dorm rooms during the COVID-19 lockdown. So the COVID-19 pandemic was the catalyst for revamping our makerspace workshops so that they could be delivered not only face-to-face, -face, but also online via video conference. And now that we're mainly back on campus, we're offering newly upgraded hybrid flexible or high flex workshops so that both on campus and remote learners can participate in our active learning workshops. Whether that be face to face in our library based makerspace or remotely via video conference or remotely on their own schedule using fully online self-directed learning resources. We initially anticipated that our high flex workshops would be relatively short lived and that we'd return to offering our on-campus flipped workshops probably early in the fall of 2021. However, many of our students continue to take advantage of our video conference option, as well as our self-directed workshop option. Feedback from learners indicate that this is not only because of COVID-19 concerns, but because HyFlex helps them better manage family responsibilities, help them manage mental health issues, and supports out-of-town learners. During the fall of 2021, 75% of HyFlex workshop learners participated via video conference and 25% participated face-to-face, -face, which is almost exactly opposite what I anticipated when we were planning our, uh, our teaching back in August this year. So what is a HyFlex workshop exactly? The HyFlex format is an instructional method that combines face-to-face, -face, video conferencing, and self-paced online learning. Learners can choose how they would like to participate in a workshop given their specific needs at the time the workshop's being offered. And you can get a sense for how that looks uh, by the Venn diagram. David Rhodes, or Dr. David Rhodes, a HyFlex researcher, recommends that when creating or converting a workshop to the HyFlex format, to also consider implementing universal design for learning principles to make the instruction as accessible as possible for learners of all abilities. Dr. Rhodes also recommends using the flipped learning technique, where students typically complete instructional work at home using videos and exercises. And then face-to-face -face workshop time is devoted primarily to hands-on activities. The teacher is then available to assist and guide students who need help during the face-to-face -face workshop time. HyFlex workshops provide students autonomy, flexibility, and seamless engagement, no matter what, where, or how they want to engage with the course. Like I mentioned before, this can be helpful because of sickness for remote learners, as well as family responsibilities. Not only can HyFlex benefit learners, but can also be a huge benefit to instructors. So for example, if an instructor can't be present in the makerspace for a HyFlex workshop, they can lead the workshop remotely 
while students join from the Makerspace and Zoom. Professors can also incorporate self-directed online learning resources into their four credit classes very easily. But let me be clear, HyFlex workshops do not have to include a video conference option. It's probably the most difficult part of HyFlex to implement, and, and like I said, let's be clear, it's not required. If desired, a HyFlex workshop can only offer face-to-face -face and self-paced online instruction and activities. And this is the version, the non-video conference version of HyFlex, is what I recommend for instructors who don't have access to the hardware for live video or maybe aren't comfortable with the hardware uh, for live video or who don't have a teaching assistant to support online participants. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So creating HyFlex workshops. Central to the HyFlex model is the principle that no matter which instructional path a learner pursues, whether it be face-to-face, -face, video conference, or self-directed, HyFlex workshops should lead to the same learning outcomes regardless of the path that learners take. The first step in creating a HyFlex workshop is to create smart learning objectives for the workshop, and that's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So also work to create a completely online, self-paced or, or asynchronous workshop, which is what you'd see typically in a completely online workshop. First create this and then build on top of that after that. If necessary, you can add face-to-face -face activities and video conference activities if the self-paced activities that you already created aren't ideal for the other instructional modes. And in my experience, most of the time, the self-paced or asynchronous activities work just fine, but sometimes they need to be tweaked a little bit. Next, create the face-to-face -face instruction based again on the self-paced instruction that you've created already. Then put as much instruction as possible into the pre-workshop assignment so that the vast majority of face-to-face -face time, whether that be in the classroom or in the makerspace uh, or via video conference so that the vast majority of that time is spent doing hands-on activities. So best practices for leading high flex workshops. A key ingredient for effective high flex workshops that are taught via both face-to-face -face and video conference is for the instructor to be supported by a teaching assistant. The teaching assistant can monitor and support online participants during the uh, initial in instructional portion of the workshop so that the instructor can focus only on the face-to-face -face participants. And this is because the cognitive load on instructors who split their attention between both face-to-face -face and video conference participants is tiring, if not overwhelming. And teaching assistants can let the instructor know if there are any online questions that come up during that initial instruction. During the hands-on portion of the workshop, Learners work through the activities they've chosen at their own pace, with the instructor circulating through the makerspace to check in with learners to see if they need any extra support. Time should also be taken by the instructor during the hands-on portion to check in with each video conference participant to see how they're doing and offer assistance. So there's a wide range of equipment that can be used to facilitate HyFlex workshops, offering face-to-face -face and video conference instruction. And if the equipment hasn't already been purchased for your makerspace, here's a quick list of low cost but effective video conference enabling tools. So first is the laptop or a computer, which I suspect most of you have already. And that's for the instructional presentation, PowerPoint or uh, whatever, as well as video conferencing. And in our case, uh, we, we use Zoom. Next is an external camera that's more easily directable than the built-in laptop camera. And it doesn't have to be an expensive one. If you spend 40 or $50, that uh, will do the trick. Next is a wireless microphone so that online participants can hear the instructor and the face-to-face -face classroom learners. Uh, we use the wireless Rode Wireless Go uh, microphone setup. It is about $200, but well worth the money. It does a great job, gives good quality audio, which is uh, interestingly extremely important for uh, 
for video conference. It's actually more important to have good quality audio than video most of the time. And lastly, a sound system or a large computer speaker is connected to the computer so that face-to-face -face classroom participants can hear the online learners. So every teaching method has strengths and weaknesses, and HyFlex is no different. So here are some HyFlex challenges. First off, remote participants must have an internet access and a computer to fully participate in a HyFlex workshop. Hands-on activities for some tools or technologies can be difficult or impossible to do without access to the physical makerspace and the tools in the makerspace. It takes extra time to create HyFlex workshops, including time and effort to create equally effective online activities. And leading HyFlex workshops can be difficult to do well without practice, like pretty much any other skill. You do need to practice to do it well. So don't be put off if the first couple of workshops are a little bumpy. Uh, that's pretty normal, and after a few tries, you'll be, uh, uh, you'll be doing well. And lastly, Teaching without a TA can be difficult. I found it to be extremely mentally taxing, so if I don't have access to a TA, uh, I'll revert back to just face-to-face -face and then uh, and then activities that people can just do on their own without the video. So conclusions. The HyFlex workshop format has been an excellent framework that's allowed our makerspace to transition from fully online workshop delivery during COVID-19 lockdowns to a hybrid face-to-face -face online model. HyFlex allows us to effectively and efficiently serve many learners who in the past couldn't attend our workshops in our physical makerspace due to sickness, family responsibilities, mental health issues, or simply physical distance. Pandemic or no pandemic, we'll continue to offer our workshops in a HyFlex format to better serve our university community. And if you have any uh, questions, suggestions, or, or anything else you'd like to discuss with me, here's my contact information. I look forward to seeing everyone next year in Atlanta.